demonstrate that the primary reason we have our brains is for social relationships. Everything is to survive, to avoid danger, but also to, 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 to interact complexly and richly with each other. And everything else is a side effect, beneficial effect. So writing software and being an engineer or being a doctor uh, is, is some of the, just taps into some of the functions that we have evolved as, as, as biological creatures really designed to help us communicate with one another, understand one another, track one another, be in touch with one another uh, so that we can survive as social creatures. That's the only reason for the brain the way it is, period. And so why mess around with it? I, I guess I should say something uh, after this question. Try not to mess around with it. <laughs> OK. One more from the okay. phone. How do you deal with kids that get addicted to computer games? Well, that's another very good question. First of all, the word addicted is probably a misnomer. Addiction in my business, in medicine, has several components. One is um, that it's, um, you develop tolerance for it, which means that you need more and more uh, of the same drug, same substance, to achieve the same effect. Uh, the second is that you have a real fundamentally strong craving for it. And the third is that when you don't have it, you go, undergo some kind of physiological withdrawal. Uh, and I think there's some more that at the moment I'm just blocking on. Uh, but at, at, at any rate, the, there, is, there are kids who are, again, uh, hooked on spending a lot of time on various parts of media, um, interactive media. So the, again, the question that, to begin with is, who is this kid and what kind of problem for himself is this kid trying to solve? What is this kid trying to do? Is he, I've had kids in my practice who, who and that become, this becomes a real flashpoint in families. And usually if a family has major problems, this, is a lot, this can be a lightning rod and there's all sorts of battles for control and all of the, all of the um, problems a family have the family has can just sort of get attracted to, to this one issue. But at any rate, what is this kid trying to solve? I had a kid whose, um, whose uh, father died, and they withdrew into their room and played a lot of video games. And the parents then worried that this, they were developing an addiction. I felt that this was a way of um, mourning, grieving, pulling into your own little world, a world that you can control, a world that doesn't have as many challenges or uh, difficulties as the real world. And if it's transient and if it takes place for a little while, it's not a problem. It's a way of adapting. Um, you know, I was just thinking of adapting. You work in a, gr in a great corporation, one of the greatest, really, in the history of the world, and it's adapting its, its requirements of you allows you to um, telecommute a fair amount of the time. Um, we could put that in some kind of negative framework, but you are addicted to your home computer. But it's not, it's an adaptation. Uh, so the, the, the issues like that, uh, that one can, or if the kid becomes too involved with the computer and it becomes all consuming, and interferes with the kid's life, and it gets to be pretty permanent, pretty much of a problem, then the kid is expressing real difficulty in his life. And this is just a symptom. And the kid would need some actual help. Some kids are shy, and they're, so that deal with it in the same way. So there are many reasons. You just can't put it all under the label addicting. Uh, behavior, which is really a mistake to do and really then just labels it without understanding it and that's a terrible mistake in medicine to think that you really solve a problem by labeling it. 
school. There are a few more questions on the phone. Is there anyone in the room that wants to ask a question? So, so I have three boys that fight over the computer. We have one computer. And so we've been fighting over the allocation of time. And uh, it's been quite a struggle. And the, the, the thing I fight about is, you know, we tell them, all right, you get an hour, you get off. But when they get off, they're just crabbier than all get out. And I've, I've, we've just been having a worse time trying to come up with strategies on that. Any, any recommendations on that? That's a good question. That? That's a good question. I, you know, it's a kind of question where a general answer, if I were really a responsible doctor, which I am, I can't give you a general. I'd have to know more about your family and how you work things at home. Anybody yeah. who gives you a simple 10 yeah, ten I sentence answer. I think it's part of being brothers uh, together in a family and how do you learn to live together and how do you learn to accommodate other people's needs and how do you learn to give up some of your own needs for somebody else? It's part of that large question. And uh, testosterone-driven boys tend to be more pugnacious about things like that. But it's, it's, it's really up to you to either enforce or try to help them find ways to compromise and solve their problem. If they're old enough, I would, I don't know how old these boys are, but if they're old enough, I would say to them, solve your own problem. Don't get me involved with this. You know, well, well they're nine, and I, and I see that you're... Sorry? They're, well, I have twins that are nine, and then another one that's almost nine eight. Nine and 11? Yeah. So eight. they need you involved. You, yeah. You, yeah. But so, I see your, your recommendation is, what, five hours a week or something like that. Something like that, yeah. You know, which is... They spend the whole week on it. Yeah, you know, I mean, those numbers keep changing. Yeah. I mean, these numbers, these graphs are... I'm, you know, there are, are there real approximations, and I think the proportions are probably more important than the actual uh, absolute times uh, that, I, that I give. And that's where the flexibility comes in. Um, that's why I have it more like in graph form than just a table, which does give you a sense of how it's, what the proportions are. But uh, you have to use your common sense. What if they have one car? What if you only have one family car? Um, and it's the same kind of issue. Um, so, I think a lot, of, a lot of what happens is that people, parents, approach everything having to do with computers, technology, and media with a different attitude and, and a lot less confidence that they can use their common sense and, their, and the kind of uh, skills that have already developed to solve those problems. And it's, this is not a new issue. This is an old issue. You know, who gets to sit at the better in the front seat, you know, with dad or mom? Or who gets to sit in the back seat or whatever? It's the same question. Any more questions? Yes. So what's your opinion on um, using screen time as a reward, such as, you know, finish your homework and then you can watch TV or finish your homework and you can have a half hour on computer games? Definitely a good idea, especially entertainment. You know, rewarding, uh, entertainment is a kind of a dessert. Uh, and, and you sort of, you do your chores, you're a good citizen at home, you do good things in, you know, you do whatever extracurricular things you do, and, and you can have your entertainment time, but don't make that the center of your life. Uh, unless it also has other things, I mean, Lots of non-entertaining things could also be fun, uh, so. Okay, there's two more questions from the phone. 